It's a beautiful day in Los Angeles uh, after a couple days of hot, hot ass weather. I think it was 100, 103 two days ago. And then yesterday it was only about 90, but I drank so much alcohol two nights ago that it felt like it was 150 yesterday. It felt like it was like 100 yesterday. I was like just incapacitated during the day. Like laying in my bed, waiting for the heat to subside, trying to cool down, touching the cold sheets. And then today it's like 72, sunny, windy, barely windy. Just a nice cool breeze. Enough so where if you put water on your face, it, it, you get super cool. Like it cools you way down. I think a lot about the collective consciousness and the power of the collective consciousness. And I'm revitalized remembering that it's actually happening. Um, and resistance is such a normal part of life that, what is it? It's, it's changes. It's not that changes people. It's the resistance to change is painful and the resistance is natural. Like for me, like a light worker, someone that's obsessed with making things better to the point where it's like unhealthy to think and think and worry about it because it's like a farmer that wants to grow some crops puts the seeds in the ground and then gets frustrated that he doesn't have the crops yet. And that's how I feel with emotions and like human stability and consciousness. Sometimes you'll see like, okay, I did it. It's done, but it's never done. You're never done. You just keep, you have to keep going and you have to keep doing it forever. I don't think this ever stops. It's so tempting to re rest on my laurels. Like I made the, the YouTube videos. I got through to some people. I did it. Now I can just relax. No, I mean, you can relax a little bit. I, I will and do relax sometimes, but the truth is, it's a process, a regurgitating, revolving process. Uh, I guess you call it epidemic, right? It's a, a, pedi a, pediologi a pediological rhythm. I'm not sure if that's a real word, epidemiological, but I think it is. Epidemical, like that. Epidemiological revolution. Just thinking about cause and effect. First, I was in there just relaxing and offering healing energy to you, the camera, me, whatever. And, uh, you know, I think what happened at one point in my life, so I'm like, can be a little edgy sometimes. I used to be not edgy at all. But then, when, when, I don't know if you've ever experienced this. Like, you, you, no one likes you. We, or back in the day, you know, you didn't have a lot of friends, but then you got really popular, and everybody liked you. They didn't even know you, but they liked you. That kind of, if you experience this kind of thing, and you should, it, it's it's worth it because, you know, we're here to help each other anyway. It doesn't really matter if you're famous or not. Um, but like when you're really famous and you are, I was so used to my life just normal. But people were like calling and coming over and like more and more and more and more. And then it doesn't doesn't scale up. Like it's not like tomorrow you'll have this much more and then the next day you'll have this much more. And the next day you'll have this much more. So in 19 days I can calculate that I'll have this many more. It happens outward. So because of the speed of change on, on global internet that it's static. It's not like you saw. It's different than like movies. It's different than... It's this ever-present ability to watch and contain and know somebody. So it doesn't, it's not incremental. It happens exponentially and unexpectedly. So I didn't, I, I, I didn't think like, 
oh yeah, once I start doing this and, and it's going to be really good that I'll, I'll get frustrated by it. But basically what was happening was I was still trying to be my old self, just have my normal, quiet, calm thoughts and like relate them to people on a one-on-one -on -one basis. But people kept like interrupting me or like coming over and wanting to be a part of it. They wanted to take, they wanted some more. They wanted to be, they wanted to like push, stop, go. And, and it was really frustrating. So I created this edgy persona that would weird people out before they got to me so that they would leave me alone. And you know, that's not what you want to do if you're trying to make a lot of friends and become popular. You kind of have to allow them just to, to take you in their direction. It's relatively difficult to maintain your status quo the more people you you come into contact with. And similar to uh, wind resistance, the more people you know, the harder the resistance is to keep pushing. Like I kept trying to get my point across and the more people I knew, the harder it was to this point where no matter how much harder I would push, nothing more would get accomplished. And all these people were talking back at me, telling me their story. And my job at that point was to listen, but instead of that, I created this persona of edginess to like, get out of my way, because I'm thinking, but I couldn't have got here without you. So that was, it took me many years to realize that it's okay to not be right all the time. It's not about being right. It's not about proving your point. Just listen. But there is a fine line, because if you don't prove any points, if you just sit there and listen all the time, then people are like, who is, the, what, what's, what, I don't even remember who that person was that it was sitting in the room not talking. So you have to kind of, to give your intense thoughts, you know, I'm like a, I'm like a, an intense man. I, I, I can create intensity very quickly and rapidly and push it and forward it and sprung it out, like spur it out from my core, like, like this, this tornado that's whirling around my core of energy that fires out in all directions in normal conversation. Sometimes I just have normal conversation about video games like Seven Days to Die or Civilization V. Or I'll just talk about like the color blue I love, or sex, you know. Or I can uh, talk about whatever the fuck you want to talk about. I'd rather not get bored talking about superficial shit, but I can do that, and I do do that. Uh, realistically, though, I'd rather burn and twist your mind with revolution. Yeah, it's that intense, man. At least it is right now. I feel like I'm gonna puke. I think it's all this coffee. I like basically was on an alcohol fast the two days. Uh, I barely ate hardly anything because I, I was like I had to go shopping which I finally did yesterday last night I love going shopping late at night by the way because it's you know you can get in there there's nobody in your way and you can it's more relaxed I used to get really high like I'd smoke all this pot and go to the grocery store and just stand there for hours in the lot in the in the aisles just like staring at the stuff you know just like it, it's all sinking in and like reading the ingredients So I, I wasn't eating much the last couple of days and I drank and kind of put my body into this like ketogenic shock. I can feel it and then I can feel it now. I'm just pulling myself out of the mud right now. Uh, the mud of starvation, if you would. I will finish this cup of coffee and coconut oil with a tiny bit of cardamom. But I'm like about to make some lentils and beans. You know the stew. About to, about to do it. I have all the stuff. I bought a new pepper, this giant green pepper. You know what? I'm going to make a video of it next time. I'll make a video of it today. And uh, don't... I will I will make a video of it. I don't want to let you down and not making a video of it because I get sidetracked by something more important. But I plan to make a video of all my ingredients so you can see what I'm putting into it. Because yeah, it's easier than, uh, than writing down a recipe. But I want you to know what I eat. I mean, it's like broccoli, jalapeno, onion, garlic. Carrots, tomatillos. I just got a bunch of tomatillos and tomatoes and I'm gonna make a salsa, but I'm also just gonna pot that shit and make this phenomenal fucking bean and lentil stew soup. But it's gonna be more of a curry because I'm gonna use coconut oil, cumin and turmeric with some sesame oil. I'll probably put some, uh, I, I just got a bunch of, uh, what do they call it? All right, I'll be right back. This beautiful, gorgeous thing. 
tahini, this is uh, part of what makes hummus. What kind of gives it a bitter? It's sunflower butter, basically. Oh, no, I'm sorry. It's sesame seed butter. And, of course, if you haven't had it before, gold, liquid gold. I highly recommend getting yourself some liquid gold. I stored it in the cupboard with the basil, and it smells like basil now, so... I mean, it really smells, it smells like crayons. Gold is one of the best minerals you can supplement. We're supposed to get it out of the dirt normally in our vegetables, but because we've mined it all out, or so much of it out, that we don't get it in our food enough. And like, I don't know if you're like, what, are you fucking serious? But like, you know, iron is a, uh, is a nutritional supplement. You need enough iron. Iron's a fucking metal, dude. So is gold. And yes, you need it just like you need iron. Differently, but you still need it, like you need iron. Platinum too, palladium, silver, all these things. You need these things in your system to become your true self. Gold, this is colloidal gold. It says here it's 99.99 plus percent pure gold. From what I know about bioavailable gold nanoparticles is that colloidal means that it's at least two atoms of gold in a, in a molecule. Then you can also get monatomic gold, which is just one atom atoms of gold floating suspended in water in a colloid which is a mechanical mixture it's not a solution it's a mixture which means that the water and the gold are both in here and they're not they're not bound chemically they're both floating in here separately so they put in 500 what is it how many parts per million it tells you eat one tablespoon orally on an empty stomach eat it orally as opposed to uh anally Wait 20 minutes before eating or drinking. The pharaohs, they say, in Egypt used to eat it. They would, like, um, grind it into a powder. Moses did this, apparently, with the golden pig. I don't know much about Judaism, but uh, I've heard that he came back down, you know, had an had a idea from God that he was leading the slaves, and they were, like, suffering and dying, or they were, like, they didn't know if they were going to survive or die. And they had... They had some relics. They had some artifacts with them. And one of them was a golden pig. And Moses ground up the golden pig into powder and then fed it to all the Jews that were that he was friends with, like his company of friends, and gave them the health and the strength they needed to continue on. It, it, it's really good. It coats your neurons. This is what I've read. It coats the neurons in your brain, causes them to superconduct electricity electricity and your synapses to superconduct which means they don't get worn out because the elect the firing the impulses are going around the neurons when you superconduct the electricity goes around it rather than through it a conductor electricity goes through superconductor goes around and like around it um and it can heighten your intellectual prowess i've also noticed that when i'm stretching a lot uh you know you'll do like a stretch and you'll feel it like rip You'll feel, feel muscle, you'll be like, oh, if I stretch more, I'm, I'm going to tear that muscle, so i got to be careful. And then if you drink a lot of gold and you do that, you'll be like, oh, it's going to tear. And then you realize, like, oh, right when it's supposed to tear, like, horrible damage, the gold fills in the tear and creates more muscle. These are my two experiences with it. I went on a manic binge trying to tell everyone to eat it for a while and buying it and giving it to people. That's one of those things like where you get a lot of resistance, you know, you try and you try and you try and you realize, why am I spending all day every day trying to do this when people are like saying, no, I don't know, I don't think it's like, Ian, just take care of yourself, do some great fucking work, have fun, man, love life. Then everybody wants to be around you anyway because you're the awesomest guy in the world. There you go. There you go. Yeah, right. Uh, awesomest, you know, doesn't get much better than that.